Hi Capricorn and welcome to your final eclipse reading for 2020, the December solar eclipse in Sagittarius. And what a way to end the year. You could say this is kind of really going out with a bang and moving into 2021 with gusto. Um, so lots that's really, really positive happening. Um, but of course, uh, the first thing to say is that um, this eclipse will be happening in your 12th house, which is the house of, uh, of the psyche and of um, the subconscious. So there is our card for the 12th house. Um, so this is one of the trickier houses. Um, so I thought I'd give you a couple of key words just to, you know, help you to think about how this particular um, sort of eclipse may manifest. So um, the 12th house is all about private, the, your kind of private life. This is the sort of recesses of the, the subconscious realm. Um, it's sometimes the house of secrets. So it can be about secret enemies, but it can also just be about, you know, illicit um, or things that we don't necessarily want other people to know. So, um, you know, firmly in the realm of what we, we prefer to sort of keep to ourselves. Um, it can also be the house of retreat or of spiritual hide hideaways, you know, kind of taking off to the highlands of Scotland and, you know, living in a remote cottage somewhere uh, where you can really kind of contemplate life, the universe and everything, or maybe write or you know, something of that ilk, um, or kind of go on a spiritual retreat, say, to, you know, somewhere like Thailand, or, you know, kind of do your whole kind of spiritual retreat and meditation along with some beauty treatments, that kind of thing. Equally, it can be a place of, of crisis where we confront things um, that we may have buried within our consciousness for a long time. Um, but, you know, there's always the potential there for alchemical transmutation of turning, you know, trauma into triumphs and of pain into power. So, you know, never um, that psychic energy is never a waste. Um, and then sometimes it can be the house of self undoing or depression or illusion. Um, but that I think is, is tends to be when when we kind of lump it together with Pisces. I think for me, it's more about where where our consciousness meets with the only oceanic consciousness um, of all that is. So there's a huge potential here to kind of open up to higher dimensions, higher realms, and also to um, to work with, with certain archetypes within the, the subconscious that we maybe pull in from the collective unconscious um, in order to, you know, to, to some, do some important inner work. But the key thing, of course, is that uh, solar eclipses always happen at a new moon, so we are talking about fresh energy, the start of a new six-month cycle, which will take us into the first half of 2021. So I think quite important actually now to set your um, your New Year's resolutions to get clear about what it is that you want to really achieve or manifest or focus on in 2021, certainly for the first half of the year. Um, because, you know, this... Um, I think is, is more the, the, the sort of the real new year rather than you know the turning of the calendar um, but let's put the Sun in there so long um, so we've got the Sun and the moon in Sagittarius there um, Mercury will also uh, be making a very close conjunction to the Sun and the moon um, at this solar eclipse so uh, for me this is all about kind of messages coming in you know I'm thinking particularly of you know Jung's work that he did in the red book um, where he kind of worked very strongly with certain archetypes or what we might call um, presences you know um, I think psychology likes to sort of reduce these things to kind of internal experiences but I think that is to kind of understate um, their kind of spiritual dimension, um, which is actually that, you know, these archetypes are actually very often um, what Henry Corbin would call theophanic presences um, that you can see only through the visionary imagination, that sort of the third eye, the, the kind of higher dimensions, um, and that actually link us to um, both our higher self, but also to um, very important guides and presences, um, you know, with that can kind of lead us into huge realizations, major uh, transitions um, psychologically and, and emotionally. So I think this could be a real turning point for you, Capricorn. Uh, you know, it's not been easy this year. You've had Saturn, Pluto, and um, Jupiter sitting in your your first house. So let's just pop in Jupiter and Saturn, um, and they will be um, fortunately, I think, for you, moving off um, about a week after this. 
this eclipse, uh, both Jupiter and Saturn will change signs. So Jupiter moving into Aquarius on the um, 19th of December, where it will stay for a year, and then um, Saturn moving into um, Aquarius actually before Jupiter, so Saturn moving faster than Jupiter. Um, and that happens on the 17th of December. And then, of course, at the winter solstice, which is when the sun enters your sign, Capricorn, um, these two planets will make a conjunction. Uh, so absolutely fabulous. But they are already in orb of that conjunction, but they happen to be still in your sign, Capricorn. So I see this as being a quite a, an important uh, metaphor almost for this eclipse for you, that, that this is... Um, a kind of a transition, a major transition from, you know, one energy into another, a major sort of shift of energy and focus. Um, now, I have gone into the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction in, in more detail in my general forecast, the cosmic weather for this eclipse, so do go and check that out if you're interested, but I think the key thing being that uh, it does start a new 20-year cycle. Jupiter and Saturn only come together once every 20 years or so, and um, you know, this is really the, the sort of marriage of faith and reason, um, of uh, kind of spirituality and science. Um, so kind of bridging those seemingly unbridgeable gaps that have been becoming increasingly polarized, you know, in, in uh, recent decades due to, I think, things like um, social media, but also the overemphasis, I think, on um, the sort of left hand side of the brain. Um, which is, I think, an extension of sort of patriarchy. So I think, um, you know, we're going to see huge shifts um, in that regard moving forward. Um, but let's not dally any further. Um, the other really important thing about this um, solar eclipse is that Jupiter, which rules Sagittarius and, of course, rules the Sun and Mercury, will be making a fantastic sextile aspect to Venus in Scorpio. So for you, uh, Capricorn, um, we are talking about, um, I think, 11th house. Um, yeah, 11th house. So let's put Venus. Well, let's just put her over there so she's not right on top of Mercury. Um, so Venus still in um, the sign of, of Scorpio. And um, from here, she's going to um, make this beautiful, friendly sextile aspect, which is quite stimulating and dynamic. Um, and I think, you know, given that we are talking about 11th house to 1st house, <coughs> I think we're talking about communication and interaction, social interactions. So these may not necessarily be in person, although they could be, <coughs> but we're talking about communication with groups. So a kind of a bonding with a group of people, possibly, um, you know, meeting new friends um, or reconnecting with friends that you haven't seen in a long time. Um, also, you know, it could it could also be about expansion when it comes to some kind of um, uh, professional group. Yes, you know, whether this is a professional association, whether it's a group of people that have got together for a specific purpose. You know, like a charitable um, pursuit or a humanitarian project. But <coughs> definitely good things coming from it. You know, Jupiter and Venus being the two benefics in astrology. So we're talking about very very positive, lucky. Um, beneficial developments there. And then the final um, thing to talk about is Mars, which is in Aries. So this is in your fourth house of home, family and um, roots. So Mars will be making a series of very, very positive trines to these planets in Sagittarius, so a fire trine. And in fact, fire energy is going to be very prominent um, you know, during this eclipse, which is all about passion. It's about inspiration. It's about the spirit. Um, it's about kind of um, uh, wanting to expand into something larger than ourselves, greater than, you know, the kind of the greater good, um, etc. Um, and Mars here, I think, um, spurring you into action, calling you into action when it comes to all things domestic or to do with, uh, you know, with homes and uh, properties and uh, where you live. So it could be that you make a decision now to. Um, you know, to relocate, you could potentially make a move to buy a property. Um, we will clarify shortly with the Geomantic cards and the Magpie Oracle, but I think it's fair to say that whatever this, um, whatever happens here in relation to um, home and family, there's definitely a sense of momentum, forward movement, wanting to take action. 
So uh, those are your kind of overall astrological themes. Let's uh, now um, get the geomantic cards and um, get a bit more detail. All right, so let's start with the, the solar eclipse itself. Oh, how beautiful. Um, so whatever happens here, um, oh, sorry, what am I doing? Um, <laughs> we want the sun. Um, okay, very, very interesting. Um, so what the, you know, the other thing that I, well, one of the things that I didn't say was that um, when we get to this eclipse, um, the sun will be conjunct the south node. And of course, the south node is Kaurataconus or the tail of the dragon. Um, so this is the, the lunar south node. And so although we are starting a new cycle in many respects, you know, first of all, a six month cycle with the eclipse. And then, as I said, the 20 year cycle with the Jupiter Saturn conjunction, um, we are also closing out a cycle. So um, this may pertain to something that happened about 18 and a half to 19 years ago when we last had an eclipse in the Saros series. Um, so think back to 2002 because there may be some links with things that you, you feel that you want to, you kind of have made peace with or that you finally got resolution on or that you're just kind of ready to let go of. So a, a very interesting kind of open open door swinging two ways, if you like, uh, this kind of revolving door where, um, you know, there's energy kind of leaving, but there's also energy coming in. Very, very interesting. It reminds me almost of that Roman headed god Janus, you know, who had two heads where you kind of, um, you know, he was the god of the new year where you are seeing out the old, uh, the old year, but you are also welcoming in the new year. So I think it's that kind of energy. All right, let's have a look at what was I saying about <laughs> revolving doors? <laughs> you, I mean, you can't make this up. Um, so for Mercury, we've got Caputraconus. So this is the head of the dragon. So we've literally got the north and the south nodes here. The south node being um, Earth. So this is about release. And then um, the um, the north node is, is, is ruled by the fire element. So um, this is about the start of new cycles. And as I said, you know, you are going to be starting some fresh karmic cycles at the solar eclipse. Um, yeah, interesting energy. Let's see what's happening with Venus. Ah, beautiful, 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 beautiful. Um, right, so this is really pointing to the the auspicious nature of this um, Venus uh, Jupiter sextile. Fortuna uh, Minor, sorry. Uh, Fortuna Minor is it's air, it's the element of air, and it's all about um, fortune smiling on you, positive shift. So um, this could be um, you know, we are talking about the 11th house here, so it could be that you team up with some really um, well-chosen people. They could have just the right skills that you need. They could be just the right fit in terms of personality. Equally, they could be in a position to really help the cause, whatever it is. Um, or it just could be, uh, you know, networking. So meeting people that, um, you know, end up being of... Um, of great, uh, no, I don't want to say benefit, but, um, you know, people that you, you end up, connections that, that end up um, being very fruitful on many levels. And then as we saw here <laughs> with our premature look at Jupiter, we've got the same geomantic figure here um, for both Jupiter and uh, and Venus. So I think really pointing to the, this idea of the sextile, you know, these two energies being linked. Um, and we are talking about kind of luck and, you um, Pleasure, joy, um, beauty, uh, expansion, optimism, a, a, a kind of a lightheartedness, enthusiasm, um, seeing the deeper meaning in things, taking pleasure in life. Um, so just really, really positive, upbeat experiences. So I think it's lovely that we've got this, this energy kind of mirrored. I think it tells us that, you know, fortune could smile on you either when it comes to groups and friendships or, you know, when it comes to, um, you know, your appearance. I mean, you could be going for a bit of a, uh, a, sh a shake up in terms of your, your look, um, in which case it looks like it will turn out very well. You'll find just the right uh, stylist or, you know, um, uh, whoever to to sort of update your look um, but equally it could be about an improvement in health because this is also the house of the body and um, 
it, it can it's also just generally about your outlook on life and the way that you come across to others so i'm definitely seeing a kind of an uptick in the energies here um with you getting a, a positive reception from um the public and from other people uh, as well as on social media of course because the 11th house is also very much about uh, your online presence uh, let's have a look at here at oh well before we go any further let's look at saturn <laughs> very important oh absolutely stunning right so for saturn we've got a quizitio interesting because it's um it's as i say jupiter and saturn will be uh, you know joining forces and they will already be in orb of, of their conjunction to each other at this eclipse so Aquisitio, another fire aspect, another fire um, geomantic figure. Um, and this Aquisitio is all about gain, usually after a period of hard work, um, you know, or some kind of trial. You know, it's almost that kind of initiatory energy where you finally sort of come out the other end and you're, you're, up, you're rewarded for all your, your efforts. Um, so Aquisitio can also be about financial gain so uh, you know but gain on the material level so it could be recognition here which then leads to you know work opportunities um but definitely very very positive energy this is literally uh the the image of of the of acquisitio is of um i think it's a, a river delta if i'm not mistaken um let me just double check um acquisitio. Okay, so it's a mouth or a pouch held open, ready to take something in. Um, that's very interesting. Um, so this is, I'll give you a couple of keywords for this. Material success, profit, riches, gain, attainable goals, expansion and absorption. Um, so it's very strong in the first house, um, as it turns out. So um, yes, very choleric upbeat fiery energy so huge expansion happening for you and i think you're going to feel that as sagittarius i mean saturn your ruler moves into aquarius which of course is in your second house and the second house is all about um you know finances gain abundance um feeling more confident expanding your skill set uh, being sought after because of your experience or your particular skills so I think, um, you know, Acquisitio possibly will start to manifest more once uh, Saturn, your planetary ruler, changes signs. And don't forget that when I'm reading these, um, these, these charts that I'm assuming that you have Capricorn rising. So if Capricorn is not your ascendant, then do go and watch the, uh, the video for whatever your rising sign is, because then a lot of what I'm saying, I think will make a lot more sense with regards to which life areas are affected by, you know, which planetary energies. And then finally, we've got Mars here in your fourth house, which is qualified by Emissio. Now, this is another um, air element. So, I mean, Earth. So what I'm feeling is that given the connection here by Earth, by element to Calder Draconis, uh, Emissio is very often about transience, about what is leaving or passing. Um, and, you know, given that we've got this energy of the end of um, like a karmic release, it could be that you're kind of letting go of some sort of aggravation or conflict or um, long-standing feud uh, with a family member or about a property, uh, maybe some kind of ancestral um, kind of wounding that has come through the male line of the family. Um, it may also have something to do with property. Maybe you were, you know, competing with somebody else to buy a particular home or property. Um, uh, so uh, what I feel now is that that is leaving. You know, a Monsieur here is all about the impermanence of things, which, you know, the Buddhists are so good at reminding us we shouldn't get attached to you know the only constant is change and so i feel as though you know if you go with the flow when it comes to um this shift in your consciousness um you also need to kind of go with the flow if it then results in momentum or changes to your home or where you live so um yeah but i think you know the key thing is that all the energies at work at this eclipse are very very positive so whatever changes come in are for your highest good and just you know kind of bear that in mind all right let's quickly clarify with the uh, the magpie oracle so let's start with that um, Carter Deconis 
the sun in the 12. Oh, the other thing to say is that um, I do go into more detail about the fixed stars and the saving symbol um, associated with the um, what's happening with the planets in Sagittarius. So do go and check that out. It's, it's my general cosmic weather forecast for this eclipse if you want to know more about that. Yeah. So I do really feel as though you are releasing um, something that's been with you for a long, long time. Possibly some kind of betrayal here with the snake. Um, you know, it's something that you feel let you down. Um, or just a situation that has really kind of like been long and drawn out and you're sort of so, you're so over it already. <laughs> you know, you're ready to kind of let it go. Interesting. Um, so for uh, Mercury, we've got um, the fox. Now, of course, Mercury can be a little bit cunning. Um, this is certainly, um, you know, Mercury has been known for its wiles, for being a bit of a trickster. And the fox is also kind of a symbol of, of trickster energy. So um, with a new cycle starting here and with Mercury in, um, in Sagittarius, um, I do think that this is possibly about kind of shape-shifting energy. So it's about that kind of out with the old, in with the new. It's about kind of um, almost being a little bit liminal, you know, like Mercury um, was able to move between worlds quite easily. He was the messenger of the gods, um, a shape-shifter, essentially. And I think what it's saying is that you need to sort of go with the flow and be a little bit um, fluid during this period because, um, it, you know, it means that you'll, you'll adapt to change possibly a little bit easier than um, than you might otherwise. I also think that it's saying choose wisely when it comes to what new cycles you want to start. So you don't necessarily want to incur, you know, further karma. So you really want to be very thoughtful and, and um, you know, think with intention about what you want to leave behind and what you want to welcome in. Okay, let's look at Venus. Beautiful. Um, this is the stalk, and um, this is all about positive changes. So um, I think just emphasizing this Fortuna Minor energy here of um, positive sh shifts happening for you when it comes to groups and friendships. You know, people coming into your life that feel quite nurturing, because this is very motherly energy. But I think also, you know, grouping together with others to birth something new, um, possibly. Could also be kind of, you know, the I'm thinking about the divine feminine energy too, that kind of you know the energy that was coming through very strongly at the solar eclipse back at the, the solstice in June, when we had that solar eclipse in ca cancer. Um it could also be pointing to that time, um, you know, because that was the start of a new cycle in Sirius, the the star uh, associated with Isis, the you know, the kind of mother goddess in Egyptian um you know, in ancient Egypt Egyptian religion um, was also very prominent then so it, it, it could also be pointing to further developments from that time so from you know June the 21st all right and then for Jupiter we've got the tower now this means something very different to the tarot this is all about um, you know kind of standing tall um, coming into your authority uh, feeling very self-sufficient and capable of um, looking for your, looking out for yourself, you know, almost sort of mastery in a way. So I do feel it's, that it's in, it's symbolic here of together with Fortuna Minor of coming into your power, of really sort of um, you know expanding into uh, this Jupiter energy, which is the Sage. So um, yes, I think very very positive actually, and I think that given that it's in your first house there's this real sense of a kind of a blossoming happening a kind of a glow up um where you are really kind of coming into your own um i think between now and and june next year so uh, beautiful beautiful stuff and then here for acquisitia we've got the garden um so I think this is talking about Saturn as the kind of prima materia, you know, this is the sort of fertile earth from which everything can sort of grow. So I think the key being that if you want gain, 
um, if you want to sort of materialize on the, on the um, you know, when it comes to abundance and, and sort of earnings and income and possessions, that the key thing here is uh, to really sort of cultivate your soil well, to um, plant seeds with intention, you know, at the, um, at the solar eclipse, and then to sort of really nurture things so that, um, you know, so that things eventually come to flower and then to fruit. And also the garden is very much about public space. So I do think this is emphasizing gains through, um, you know, Venus being in your 11th through groups, group dynamics, group, group collaborations. All right, two wants to come out for Mars. Um, this is the anchor and the bear. Very interesting combination, actually. So the anchor for me is all about stability, which I think fits quite well with the idea of roots. Um, and, you know, Amicio is Venus in Taurus energy, which is quite sort of rooted and um, fixed. It's fixed energy, fixed earth energy. So there is this tendency to kind of want to put down roots and um, to find permanence, you know, kind of have a strong base from which to kind of expand outwards. Um, but, you know, Amicio pointing sometimes to losing out or, you know, to things not quite panning out. Um, so it's interesting that we've got the bear here. Now, this could be, the, you know, the person that you are um, having differences of opinion with, you know, if Mars is about conflict. The bear being somebody who is quite, is often, um, you know, quite powerful. You think of the emperor in the tarot. So they can be a little bit overbearing. They may want things their way it can be a parent sometimes or a boss or a mentor but you know given that we are talking the, in the context of um, home and family it's more likely to be a relative or a parent figure that's um, quite controlling um, and it may be that you are kind of being asked to uh, with a missio here just to sort of um, maybe come to terms with the fact that um, in order for you to kind of come into your power, you know, here with the tower, which is somebody who can stand on their own two feet, who doesn't rely on anybody, that you may also need to accept that things have to change within the family dynamic. And that may not necessarily be um, always pleasant. It may, you know, other people don't always necessarily react well to change. Um, so we may change. It may make other people feel a little bit threatened. Their response may be to try and control, uh, demean, put down, that kind of thing in order to maintain the status quo. Um, but that doesn't mean you have to sort of accede or go along with it or anything like that. So quite um, tricky energy here in, in the in the 12th, I mean in the 4th. Um, but you know we are talking about a try and angle. So I do feel that ultimately things will work out for the best. Right, let's have a look at your um, your final geometric figures. Huh. <sighs> ah, this is so apt. I just love it. Yes, brilliant. So, um, very, very interesting energy. Um, so, what was I saying about Saturn as the kind of prima materia? Here we've got dark matter. Um, the sort of the basis, the kind of underlying basis of everything in the universe. Um, so this is literally the prima materia in a more kind of scientific context. You know, the kind of the 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 fabric upon upon which space um, you know is thought to kind of rest. The the eighty percent of matter that we can't see but that we can um, you know that shows up in in certain um, tastes and things. Um, and I think really pointing to the mystery of um, of this process of alchemy and of of Saturn as well. Um, and then um, we've got the oceans, uh, which I think points to this 12th house, this oceanic consciousness that I was talking about, hidden depths. And I think the two things together speak of a lot of um, fertility. So if you think about dark matter as being similar to the sort of the, the womb of creation or the cosmos, and we think of the oceans as being um, very often the sort of um, uh, the nursery of uh, life on Earth. Um, you know, the, the oceans cover most of the surface of the Earth. Um, and very often they are concealing a lot of depths below them, which is, of course, often what's happening in this private area of our lives in the psyche. So I think from this is um, potentially enormous potential to really kind of come into your own, to come into your power. 
because the final card is inner core um, and this to me when he talks of a kind of you know if you think of the, in, the the core of the earth it's supposed to be like an iron or um, core which is very which is very hard and in fact you know if you think Mars is actually the ruler of uh, the ruler of um, of iron um, so I think it's it's kind of saying that you you really you're discovering new depths about yourself you're kind of psyche is opening up the mystery of your psyche is sort of opening up you're, you're discovering perhaps all this information that you didn't know you had access to but I think on another level this is really about you kind of coming into your power and authority particularly emphasizing Jupiter here with this tower icon um, that you know even if you may even if you have differences of opinion with others and maybe you you might have been intimidated in the past perhaps you know wanting to people please want to do the right thing um, now you're kind of um, getting to a point where you sort of realize that that can sometimes leave you open to man manipulation by others you know always wanting approval sometimes others are not going to give approval unless we do what they want and I think what you're kind of realizing now uh, through this six month process is that um, really you've, you've got to sort of develop a core of steel um, a center from which you kind of stay aligned and you're not thrown by you know potential conflicts or loss um, matters that kind of come and go you know even if they are in the domain of family and that when you kind of you um, you come into this alignment with your kind of your core strength your core uh, the core of your being this is the sort of the eternal part of you that's not really affected by temporal matters or things that happen to the personality and I think staying in this energy is um, is ultimately going to make you so um, strong that um, you'll really be a, like a force to be reckoned with. So um, you know the sky's the limit. But anyway, let's 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 clarify again. Hmm. Yes, I think, you know, really emphasizing what I was saying about, um, you know, relationships and interactions with others, especially given this, you know, the 11th and the 4th house emphasis here. Um, so really what I feel from these trinkets is with dark matter to the cross, um, you could be, you know, this could be about the cross of matter, which is, of course, you know, the, the, um, uh, how we incarnate. So it's, it points to our astrological chart, you know, this, this, um, the axis of the angles but I think equally it's about um, you know what I was saying earlier about the 12th house emphasis of being about turning trauma into triumph and this trauma could well well up from the depths and it may have to do with something in your childhood which is why we've got um, the the child or the children here I think emphasizing this um, figure here that's on top of the the world um, so I think it's really talking about kind of getting in to grips with things from your childhood that maybe have haunted you from from a for a long time and that may have affected your relationships with others you know it, mi it might have sort of made you um, top and change be a little bit hot and cold a bit ambivalent maybe so, uh, maybe avoidant um, and I think now what you, you're coming to realize is that you need to really confront uh, whatever this is so that it doesn't continue to have a hold on you and once that happens you develop the strong inner core um, this kind of rock-solid um, center of your being uh, from which you interact with people this is the bird so it's very often about communication you you communicate very differently um, with others including family members and friends and I think from that um, a whole new level of relationship potentially could open up for you and that could also be why we've got the bear and the the anchor here it could be that you know relationships for you particularly family relationships have been quite transient and um, not very stable you know maybe you didn't come from a very stable home um, and now because of the, the rock solid inner core that you're developing you know the, the inner authority that you are you're really kind of coming into your own as an adult um, and you know a lot of empaths really struggle with that um, you know this is something that um, 
I kind of discovered myself um, in the last few years is that uh, very often the empath is almost like a uh, you know like a, like I hate to use the word adaptive child you know that sort of Eric Byrne um, philosophy but that we can people please and what what very often happens is that we expose our vulnerability to others but in a way that isn't really like we don't have the wherewithal to sort of defend ourselves um, from others who may take advantage or who may kind of hurt us and so when we react we come from quite a childlike place too um, which doesn't always serve us or that keeps us stuck um, and I think what it's saying now is you're really kind of adulting you're kind of coming into your full power as an adult um, and of course the adult has much better coping strategies than the child and that may also be why we've got the um, the fox here with Kippo Draconis so coming out of this energy of feeling betrayed and hurt so almost like a victim um, into an energy of being much more empowered being able to come up with strategies for coping with difficult situations or conflict that's much more empowering to you um, instead of kind of waiting for the other person you kind of coming into your power not allowing yourself to be sort of pushed around or bullied or um, you know sort of um, uh, taken advantage of or you know any of those things where, you, where you, you take the power back and from there you develop much more stable relationships moving forward. Um, so fantastic, I mean really, really positive. Um, yeah, um, I hope that's um, resonated with you Capricorn. Um, do let me know in the comments if it has. Uh, always appreciate your likes, shares and subscribes. Um, but yeah, that's, that's it for me. Um, for this year so um, all the very best for the rest of 2020 and um, happy new year mm -hmm.